Welcome to another video on data to decisions. In today's video, we'll be building the bullet chart or the bullet graph. And this is a very popular um, visual, which is used to compare the target versus actual. But in addition to comparing the target versus actual, it also provides additional context. For example, here on the chart on this left, we not only show the actual value of 18, and then the target value is 30. But we can provide some context to say, if the actual value is within this darker blue area, then it's poor performance. But then you go to the next series or next shade of blue, that is average performance. And when you go the lightest, then it is in the good area. So if you have cases where you're defining a range to say, if the value, actual value is between A, X and Y, then it's considered to be average. Otherwise, it goes to the next range and Y to C, it is considered average or satisfactory. And then if it is greater than that, you consider it good or excellent. So if you're defining those performance measures that way, then a bullet graph is the right chart for you to present that visually. The other example I have here on the right side is each of these products, we can compare not with those ranges, but we can also compare with the last year's sales. For example, um, 18 is the actual sales for the current year, but what about the last year? It was 20. So I can show the last year's value as a column in the background, and then the in the foreground is the current year's um, actual value. And then the target that we have set is this little green uh, line, horizontal line, which is a target we have set for the current year. So now we can show all these things um, in a single visual without overloading the user with too much information, too much um, clutter in the visual. This is where the bullet chart comes in handy. So now let's go ahead and build this bullet chart from scratch. So the first thing I'm going to do is to select the product, which is my category here which is going to go into my x-axis, select that. And then I'm going to actually select the three ranges, which is, I'm calling it poor, average, and good. In your case, it may be three, it may be two, it may be even just one uh, that you want to set as the context for the measurement. And so I'm gonna use this uh, option, but your, uh, how many ever series there are, the steps are gonna be the same. So select them, insert, and this time we, we actually want these charts, these columns to be, um, you know, overlapped, but they are still clustered columns. So I'm gonna choose 2D column, right? So now I have the products on the x-axis. The over series is the blue, orange is average, and G green is the good. So now we have this, I'm gonna right click, format data series. I'm going to make this data series overlap 100%. Now we get this, and this is where we have to go back to right click, select data, and make sure the poor is in the bottom and the good um, is actually, the average is in the middle. So the, the order in which they appear in this chart source data is very important. Because I had the poor average good as the three columns in my raw data, Excel will automatically plot it accordingly, but we need to order it that way so that the poor um, performance data comes to the forefront of the chart. So the blue poor series is now at the forefront, so I can clearly see that. I can see the average and I can see the good behind it. So that's the first step. We got this. I want to click on this uh, first series at the bottom and I want to change it to a color that I am going to use a little bit darker version or a um, color of blue. And then this one in the middle, I'm going to choose solid fill. And I'm going to choose a little bit lighter color. And then the last one, I can do very light or I can even do a little bit of a gray if I want. So this represents the, actually let me go ahead and do the lightest blue. If that can still be okay. Yeah, so we have these three. Uh, make sure it's you know noticeable difference. You don't want it to be too close in shade because then it'll be harder to differentiate. But now we have the good average and poor series uh, plotted. So this is great. Now we want to add the actual to it. So I'm gonna right click, select data, add, 
and I'm going to choose uh, actual as the name of the series, and then I'm going to choose these values. Great. Now, everything seems to be messed up now, but it's okay. For the x-axis, it's still the product, so I'm going to choose the same and hit OK. Now, what I want to do is to right-click and change the series chart type, and I want to move the actual to the secondary axis. Okay, so I'm going to move it to the secondary axis. I'm going to leave everything the same, but make sure that all the plot types for all the four series are clustered columns. Okay, so we still don't have that effect of a bullet chart. So I'm going to click on the actual series. You can do it by clicking on the inside the chart, or you can go here to the drop down. And if you don't have the side panel here, for example, like this, always click on the chart, press Control 1, and that will open up the side panel. And now click on the chart again if it goes away. And then I can choose from this drop down the actual series. Okay. And go to series options. It is secondary axis. Correct. But the important thing we want to do here is increase the gap width. Let's say, for example, I increase it to 500%, which is the max. You can see that the actual series is now getting narrower or thinner when you increase the gap width. So let's say, for example, I go to the other, the good series, they have a gap width of 219%. And so I'm going to change that to 100%. So let me go back again. Excel sometimes does this. If I go back to the good, average, and poor, they're all in the primary axis, right? You can choose one of them and make sure that this gap width, let's say, is 100%. If you go to the actual series, you want to make sure that this is much greater than that. That is what will give us the bullet shot effect. So if I do 200%, you will see it still is within, but if you want it to be much narrower within, you can start increasing it. Hopefully you can see how um, the width of the actual series is changing when you change the gap width. Now let's let's fix with this one. I'm going to click on this actual series and change the color uh, maybe to a little bit uh, gray. Uh, and this is going to be my actual series. And one thing we want to do now is to add the target series. And I can right click, select data, add target. This time I'm going to select target. Okay. And Excel automatically plotted that target as well, but we'll go and change how it appears. So right click, change chart type, and check the target. So it's done as a clustered column. I'm going to change that to align with markers and hit OK. So it is still on the secondary axis, but I want it as a line. Click on the line. Uh, I actually don't want to see the line. But I want that ability to add a marker, which is I'm going to use this horizontal line here, and I'm going to increase the size to 10. So this gives us this target horizontal line effect. And so now we have the target horizontal line. We have the actual gray bars, and we have the three shades of blue to represent those three good, average, and poor ranges of data. We don't need the secondary axis. So I'm going to click on the secondary axis and delete it, and it goes away. Now I'm going to right click on the grid line, format grid lines, solid line, very light. So it's almost invisible. And I can change the chat title now. Um, product, sales, actual versus target. And then I'm going to format this title a little bit. I'll move it to the left. And these are just formatting choices that you can make according to your company's needs. Uh, move the legend to the top. I would like to add in this case, it says product sales and this ABCD. If I wanted to add uh, access titles, I will click this. And now I can just write product. And I don't need this much space at the bottom. And this could be, again, I'm assuming this is sales data. And do that. There we go. So we have the chart representing the sales and the x-axis and the y-axis titles have been done and everything looks good. Um, and I click on the chart. 
I can go to border, solid line, change this to rounded corners. So there you have it. So you, you have this bullet shot effect, which, you know, the gray can go past the target. So you may exceed the target. You may be under target. And then you can completely control how you want the, um, the series to be whether um, the good and the you know average values in the series you can totally control uh, by entering the data here for example if i want this to be 40 i hit 40 and you can see that it automatically changes the um, good range for product a alone to be this range of 40. Right? so that's kind of how you can build a bullet shot very easily and going back to my example i gave you this is an example where I only have one range. I don't have like a good uh, average and poor. It's just only one range that I can uh, show for last year. And then the current year value will be the darker um, gray, black here. And then we still have the target value. In terms of the uh, labels themselves, so my preference would be, you know, click on the active, add a data label. And I would like to put this label inside and so basically making sure that you choose to show the label for which, I mean, the chart is primarily meant for. Uh, do not try to add all the labels for all the series here. It'll get very cluttered. Um, so my suggestion will be choose the focused metric and the focused values as labels and everything else can be going uh, into your presentation in some other place. And if you really want to show all of them at the same time, there would be other visuals that are you know, better suited for that. Uh, so please let me know if you have any questions on this. If you have any suggestions on how to make this better, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon in the next one.